Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Wayne Emmanuel, and I work for Warchild, and I'm the Gaming Partnerships Manager. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about uh, how gaming relates to the work that we do. Um, I'm going to tie it into Unity as well at some point. It's going to be tangible, but there is a tie. Um, and yeah, I'm going to talk about all the opportunities for developers um, and uh, designers and studios and publishers to get involved in the work that we do. So I've got a handy clicker. Um, just to give you a little bit of a breakdown, who we are, uh, Warchild UK is an NGO, a charity, international NGO, that specializes in helping children who've been affected by conflict. Um, we consider ourselves a specialist uh, organization because we focus primarily on children and young people who have been displaced. Um, we don't so much focus just on the initial aid because within charity work, that's, that's super important. But what we think is really important as well is uh, most of the time, wars go on for about eight to 10 years, and we think it's really important that we're there throughout that whole process. Um, so the four things that we actually kind of focus on and what a lot of the money and funding goes towards are these four key areas. First area is protection, which is super important. And what we do is we create child-friendly uh, spaces in the areas that we work in. Um, and what that also protection covers is uh, kind of psychosocial um, protection. So a lot of the children, unfortunately, have suffered from PTSD or have been associated with armed groups, and we work in trying to combat that. Um, and I should probably also have mentioned that the regions that we work in are currently seven regions. So Central Africa Republic, uh, DRC, and Uganda for Africa. And for the Middle East, we work across uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and uh, Jordan in response to the Syrian crisis. And the newest uh, region that we've started working in is Yemen. Uh, the second thing that we also focus on is education. Um, obviously, super important. Um, and in terms of what we do there is uh, we try to make sure that the children can continue on the education that they're obviously missing, having been displaced. Um, and actually, one really cool thing that uh, we've implemented at the moment is this campaign called Can't Wait to Learn, which we first trialed in South Sudan. Um, and that actually uses gaming and uh, tablet-based learning for children to continue learning while being displaced effectively. Um, with the, that particular project, we're targeting and hoping to reach 37,000 children. Um, and that's being scaled across uh, Jordan at the moment. And what's also really interesting and what I think is really cool about this is uh, it uses the art made by children um, in those fields and in those regions. Because if I was to ask any of you to draw some art of, like, say, fruit, the fruit that you would draw from where you're from is probably different to the fruit that they're more used to. And so it's really important to have localized content for them. And the, the other kind of two other things we focus on is livelihoods for uh, younger children and advocacy. We think it's really important to amplify the voices of children. So how does this all kind of come back into gaming? Um, so the way how Warchild actually began uh, 24 odd years ago was uh, two, uh, two filmmakers, uh, David Wilson and B uh, Bill Leeson, um, were uh, filming the Bosnian conflict. And obviously, they were horrified by what they saw. Um, and instead of kind of reaching out to politicians, they decided to reach out to musicians. And so they reached out to people like David Bowie and Radiohead and Oasis and Blur, all the kind of the cool Brit pop guys of like the mid 90s, um, and decided to pull together this album, which is called the Help Album. And what's important about this, because I'll tie back into it a little bit later, um, the Help Album was recorded, pressed, mastered, and went to number one in the album charts in just six days. Um, to my knowledge, I think it's still one of the fastest and best-selling charity albums of all time. So we're obviously very proud of that. And that's kind of continued up until this day in terms of our relationship with the music industry. Uh, we still work uh, very closely with kind of various artists. Last year, we, we do this uh, collaboration with the Brits Week uh, and O2 in the UK, and we do kind of smaller, intimate gigs. So we had Coldplay and uh, Florence the Machine and Block Party last year, uh, amongst others. And this year, we had Biffy Clyro, Basement Jacks, Paul Weller, uh, et cetera. Um, and so moving on, um, you'll probably, again, this, is, this does tie into gaming. Um, we've now kind of reached out to the gaming industry to help also uh, advocate and fundraise in the same way how we do so through music. 
And so far, we've more recently, we've been working with people like Tim Schafer and Randy Pitchford, Sam Barlow, uh, Steve Gaynor, in terms of helping, helping to amplify that gaming message. But it all actually kind of ties back into 10 years ago when a guy called Miles Jacobson, who used to work in the music industry and helped in that original uh, music album, um, he moved into gaming, and now he's the head of studio at Sports Interactive. Sports Interactive, who make the Football Manager games. And they've been supporting us since 2006. Um, and that was our really kind of first partnership within gaming. Um, and Miles, being the guy he is, has always kind of advocated for us and pushed us forward wherever possible. So we not only get in-game impressions within Football Manager, um, but they also donate uh, to Warchild. And then we kind of, then I think more, chari uh, more game studios and publishers got wind of us and what we were doing, and Relic um, uh, Studios and Humble Bundle also did a couple of things for us in the past. And then we got this uh, communication from the guys at World of Tanks. And what's really interesting is that it's called World of Tanks, and it's a company called Wargaming.net. So you're probably all questioning, why is that company working with a charity that's called Warchild? Um, and internally, I guess the, the guys at Warchild were obviously very concerned and kind of questioned this as well, but what they did was they researched Wargaming.net and they looked at the content and said, well, actually, it's, the game is rated a Peggy 7, so it's effectively kind of for children, in theory. Um, and in terms of its content, it's, it, there is no blood, there's no harming of adults, there's no harming of children, it's just typically machines against machines. And also, you know, let's not pretend it has a massive audience, and we thought that's a, uh, that's a perfect platform for us to kind of talk about the work that we do. Um, but from that also, we had this conversation about trying to talk about the work that we do and relate it back and make that differentiation between real life conflict and video game conflict. And that's why we created this video um, that's called Duty of Care, so I'm just gonna show you this right now. So hard hitting stuff. Um, so we try to be bold in whatever we do. Um, and that kind of continued with the next partnership, which was with 11-Bit Studios and This War of Mine. Um, we actually, this, I think this was the first partnership where Warchild proactively reached out to work with developers. And I think we just saw the trailer for this 
and just sent a Facebook messages, uh, message to the developers because we were so intrigued by it. Um, and obviously, I think a lot of people might be aware of this sort of mine, but it's set from the perspective of civilians. Um, and 11-bit studio uh, very, were super keen to kind of support us, and so we worked with them on this chari charity DLC for Steam um, where we reached out to graffiti artists and they kindly kind of put that content in the game so when people purchased the DLC, they'd be able to find the pieces of art um, and find out a little bit more about the artist, but also about what Warchild do. Um, so we'll, uh, this one of mine and 11-bit studios are still very close partners to, uh, to Warchild and um, you know, they're really important in terms of the work that we do. But it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all kind of depressing videos. <laughs> um, it does get a little bit lighter. Um, and going back to that original music album, um, what we did, I guess it started about two years ago, but it was an idea from Miles Jacobson from Sports Interactive, and he wanted to recreate the original music album idea that, that we did for uh, help. And instead of doing a music album, they thought, okay, let's do a compilation but of games. Um, and so we reached out to all of these various different studios, Bossa, Curve, Creative Assembly, Sumo, Digital, Rovio, Team 17, Modern, Dr Modern Dream, Spilt Milk, Torn Banner, Hardlight, and Sports Interactive. Um, and the brief was to create a brand new game, a brand new IP via a game jam in just six days. Um, and this is what they created. The link to Unity is that Unity was one of our key engine um, partners, so they kindly provided uh, licenses to all the studios who wanted to make use of that. And of all the uh, 11 studios involved, nine studios made use of Unity um, and Unity Pro, which I think in terms of, and I'm not a technical person, allowed kind of like cloud builds, is that a thing? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> but also in terms of, I think, ad revenue, I think you can run Unity ads, and that's something that potentially we might be looking at in the future because we're now working on the next iteration of that help compilation idea. Whereas before it was just for Steam, we're now doing this for mobile. And the plan is to kind of work on this project and hopefully launch it in January 2018. So at the moment, we're just building up our committee of people who are involved. We've got Sega, Amazon, ex-King, actually, because she's just left. Um, Andy Payne, obviously, from Appy Nation, and Miles Jacobson, again, supporting the project. Um, and we're still kind of finalizing the rules and the brief for studios to get involved, but the time limit will still be six days, although we're going to open it up for developers who have prototypes that they want to also launch. And one of the major things I didn't mention that I should absolutely mention is that Sega Europe is our publisher, um, so they publish the original game compilation on Steam, and they're going to also be doing that kindly enough for us on uh, the mobile uh, platforms. Uh, IP, that's the other cool thing. Um, you guys own the IP, and it's the same thing for all of those games that I showed you previously. So what that means is uh, if you build this really cool short mini game and you think, we're going to make this into our own big fully-fledged title, you can absolutely do that, and you have no ties to either Sega Europe or to Warchild. You guys, are, you can do whatever you want. Um, so here is just some feedback from some of the developers uh, who were involved in the last project. The Warchild project is a really great opportunity to sort of get a few people together and see if we can make something cool with that. So the idea in the game is to rescue some aliens that have been stranded on a dying planet. So the idea is that to get as many through as possible, you have to collect three of them or more at the same time. And that brings them through a portal from their planet 
to our planet and it's kind of just, you know, save the universe kind of stuff. The biggest challenge, of course, is, is the limited amount of time we've got to make this game. We normally spend a year, two years, three years sometimes on a game, so to spend such a condensed amount of time on a single idea and try and make it really good and something that people want to play, yeah, not easy. It is really nice seeing that some of our small games like these can actually do so much to help Warshire, actually. I mean, it's awesome. Athelion uh, is a single player arcade game. Uh, you collect pickups, avoid enemies, and get high score. Oh, don't, oh, don't forget the power ups, though. So, Splash Bash is a local multiplayer party game where you are some dudes with water guns trying to push each other into the water and you can only move by spraying water. Uh, and the last thing Following the success of the Duty this. of Care campaign, Warchild wanted to reach out to war game enthusiasts and raise awareness of the real-life impact war has on children. Every day, millions of gamers pick up guns in online combat. What if for one day, they were to lay down their weapons and unify to send a powerful message and show their social conscience? In 2016, they were given that opportunity with War Child's Armistice, the first ever annual fundraiser that calls on gamers to temporarily lay down their arms in global support of peace. War Child approached leading game studios to bring Armistice to life, and their unique and inventive approach made for brilliant activations. From non-violent in-game modes, to purchasable content. Armistice ignited the imaginations of the community and their advocacy raised awareness as players amassed thousands of hours of gameplay, but most importantly, donations. The event provided the opportunity to show their social conscience and to discuss the real impact of war. The industry embraced Armistice with leading publications following the story and extending the reach outside of conventional gaming platforms. The reaction has been remarkable, with over $130,000 raised in just eight weeks. For every dollar spent, Warchild received $14 in donations, six times the industry standard. Over 90,000 people participated in Armistice gameplay, while over 1 million gamers engaged with the campaign, and its reach was more than 10 million. But more importantly, Armistice has started a movement. The idea has mobilized game studios to deliver an important message to the world, a message of peace. And with more studios joining for 2017, it's just the beginning. So just to explain that, um, so Armistice was this campaign that we came up with last year that we just launched and you kind of saw all the ideas of it, but it was about, um, instead of ignoring violent games, to actually see if we can ask studios and gamers and community modders to pacify games for a short period of time during the armistice period. And you saw the numbers in terms of how successful it was, so we're obviously scaling it for 2017. Um, so that's one other big project that we're gonna be looking at. But also we have all of these other things that we're planning for, um, for this year and, and beyond in terms of gaming. So we take it just as serious um, in terms of projects, and we consider like gaming to be the next big evolution for War Child, maybe possibly um, even bigger than our music relationships. But the last thing I wanted to leave you with is just that we're not the only charity who are doing things. There's other awesome guys who are doing great stuff like Good Games or Games Done Quick, Awesome Games Done Quick, Extra Life, um, who stream, and obviously Charles Play in the US, who have made like $40 million through streaming alone. So it's not just War Child who are kind of doing things in the gaming space. These guys are also. Um, and that, I think, is effectively it.